Hey there guys, it's Mr. Herbst here and today our focus is going to be on an introduction to ecology. Now if you take a look over here at these pictures, all these pictures have one thing in common. That thing is that they are all examples of relationships. Now not a relationship in the human sense, but a relationship in the life sense. If you take a look over here at this bear, this bear is chomping down on a couple of salmon. Well that is a relationship. Again, not in the same sense as a human relationship, but if we talk about a relationship between the salmon and the bear, or a predator-prey relationship, now that's what ecology is all about. So ecology on its most basic level is the study of relationships between organisms and also the relationship between organisms and their environment. So for example, over here on planet Earth, there are thousands of different types of environments and thousands of different habitats. And if we talk about all the different organisms that live in those little areas, those little habitats, that's what ecology is all about. The relationship between them and also their environment. And so we, uh, what we do first is we say that the biosphere is the portion of the earth that can support life. So basically, the biosphere includes the air, the land, the, the fresh and salt water. So basically, the biosphere is everywhere that can support life. So basically, pretty much everything besides outer space. And in those places that are supporting life, there are what we call abiotic and biotic factors. The first thing we're going to talk about is biotic factors. And so before I go any further, I want us to take a look again. Here's that root word, bio. And bio, you know, means life. Biology is the study of life. So biotic factors, what do you think they are? You know, yeah, that's right. They are all of the living organisms that are in an environment. So all of the living things. That can include um, animals, plants, fungus, uh, bacteria, protists, basically anything that is living is a biotic factor. Now the opposite of that is what we call an abiotic factor. And I really want to emphasize what it means to put an A, the letter A in front of things. If you look at the word like normal, for example, normal, you know, kind of means, uh, well, it means normal. It means things are normal. But what does abnormal mean? It's the opposite of normal. Things are not good when they're abnormal. And so abiotic factors is sort of negating or taking it to the opposite. So if biotic factors are the, the living things, what is abiotic things? That's right. They are the non-living things in an organism's environment or the non-living parts of an organism's environment. That can include the air, the water, the sunlight, the soil, the humidity, the temperature, and even the wind. All of those things are things that allow organisms to live where they live, but all those things are actually non-living themselves. So there's abiotic and biotic factors in every environment. And so the first thing that us uh, ecologists like to do is we first, th what we do is we, we organize life into different levels. What we do is, is we, we start with the level of an individual organism. For example, this alligator right here is one single organism, such as an alligator. And now if we have a population of alligators, that is all of the alligators living together. Uh, they're from the same species living together in the same area. That is a population. It's the next level of organization. So an individual, an individual alligator is the lowest level of organization on the ecological level, and a population of alligators is the next level. And we also looked at populations a lot in our last unit because it just so happens that populations are the smallest thing that is capable of evolving. And then communities. If we go ahead and circle this right here, all of this that I circled is a community. It's an assemblage of all of the populations that live together in a certain area. So now we're not just talking about alligators, but if we include turtles and birds and trees and the things in the, that live in the water and fish and human beings and, and all these things are different populations of organisms that live together in a certain area. And when we talk about when those populations of things live together and interact with their non-living environment, that is what we call an ecosystem. So once again, non-living means abiotic. So when we talk about e ecosystems, we're talking about 
um, all of the living things and the populations of living things that are interacting with their non-living environment. And then the last or the biggest level of organization we're going to talk about in this unit is a biome. A biome is simply a group of ecosystems that have a very similar or the same climate. So a good example of a biome would be the Chicago land area. If you talk about where I live or Palatine, where we go to school, or, or down south, uh, Downers Grove or Naperville or uh, uh, Mokina, New, New, New Lenox, and Chicago itself, that is what we call a biome. Chicagoland area has a very similar climate. In fact, probably all of northern Illinois has a very similar, similar climate. So that is what we consider a biome. It's a group of all of the living things interacting with their non-living environment, their abiotic factors um, in one specific type of climate. Anyway, you guys, that goes ahead and concludes our introduction to ecology. If you are in stride biology, we're going to take a look at those questions in class. And then if you are in regular biology, my eighth period, we are going to go ahead and uh, put those questions in our Google form. And so make sure that you complete the Google form quiz below. Anyway, guys, I'm signing off. You all have a nice day.